What's up guys, my name is Ivan Baldovinos and I create videos on graduate school life and advice. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. In this video, I'm going to share another statement of purpose for the Harvard Graduate School of Education, but this time it's going to be for the PhD program. As a student, community organizer, student advocate, and activist, I have constantly found myself struggling with and within an educational system that is not structured to meet my needs. My experience with education has not only led me to encounter discrepancies and inequalities within the structure, but it has also allowed me to identify and address these problems through the research and community work I conduct. With the academic training and research skills I have received through the disciplines of sociology and ethnic studies, I am in a unique and ideal position to continue these uh, academic efforts to the Harvard Graduate School of Education's Cultures, Communities, and Education program. Through my graduate research, I hope to conduct work that aims to reduce the educational disparities within underrepresented low-income communities of color. Ultimately, with a doctoral degree focused on education, I hope to not only conduct research that benefits the communities I work with, but also share this information by teaching at the college level. Furthermore, I have the ambition of developing a nonprofit, community based pre college information organization that will use the information gathered from my research in order to implement and develop programming that will help reduce educational disparities. So, in the opening paragraph, the applicant tells the admissions committee their goals and um, both graduate and career goals and um, and sets up the stage really well in terms of what the essay is going to be about. So they their thesis here is describing their educational experiences and how they have seen inequalities um, and discrepancies. And um, so as a reader, I am I am anticipating them talking about how they want to solve these inequities and discrepancies for other students. Growing up in Huntington, Huntington Park, California, a sub-city of the inner Los Angeles area placed me in a location with limited and scarce academic resources. My middle and high schools were overpopulated and the majority of staff was more interested in preventing gang activity and substance abuse than creating a college-going culture. Students were crammed into classrooms where class size averaged 35 to 40 students and were expected to share books and outdated resources. Due to the poor preparation provided by my high school, I arrived at UC Berkeley unsure of whether I was entitled to my spot in the prestigious university. In my classes, I remember professors talking about concepts I had never heard of, mentioning names like Foucault and Weber as if they were simple, well-known concepts. It seemed as if the message sent by my middle and high school administrators and counselors was confirmed. Huntington Park students should not go to college. In this next paragraph, the applicant talks a little bit about their personal experiences with, with public education. So they describe, um, you know, their setting, how, they, how, how the applicant um, had limited resources, outdated um, resources and books, and how um, classroom sizes were large um, and weren't conducive of um, that student-centered approach to teaching. And then they move into talking about how they felt that their public education did not prepare them for college, and th in this case, UC Berkeley. Nevertheless, through my involvement with the Chicano Latino community at Berkeley, and through my passion as a tutor slash mentor for middle and high school students from Oakland, California, I developed a passion for encouraging higher education within underrepresented communities. These experiences gave me the opportunity to talk to staff, teachers, and administrators who were dedicated agents of social change and provided me with insight into student and family perspectives. Through conversations with parents and their children, I began to understand that other individuals shared my uncertainties of belonging within the system of higher education. It was then that I realized that my insecurities were not personal matters that were inherited in my persona, but were produced by the inequalities created by the educational system, inequalities that deprived me of the resources my peers received. As this realization sank in, I began to grow confident in my abilities, my academic abilities. 
deciding that even though I probably had to work harder than some of my peers, I did belong in UC Berkeley and was capable of being a competitive, overachieving student. As a result of my personal experiences and those of the Oakland families, during my junior year, I developed workshops tailored to meet the needs of Spanish-speaking Chicano Latino parents. With these meetings, I hope to give parents the tools and information necessary to motivate and support their children in their higher education endeavors. Through my various interactions with parents, I quickly realized that they were eager to learn college preparation information. Often, the hour that I had with them was not enough, and I would find myself answering their phone calls and emails outside the workshop environment. In the next couple of paragraphs, the applicant talks about their experience with their research interests. So in this case, um, family engagement, working with parents and students, and, and, and talking about those issues that the applicant encountered while they worked as a tutor and a mentor and um, the workshops the student conducted. Um, as you can tell also in these paragraphs here, the student takes you know, their passion for family engagement in higher education and implements that not only in a service in service work such as being a tutor and mentor, but also developing some workshops specifically for Oakland families. It was through this experience with eager families, as well as personal experiences with my own family and my own struggles with, with education, that I developed an interest in understanding the relationship between Chicano Latino families and the system of higher education. Thus, I applied to the sociology department's honors thesis program proposing a project that would explore the intersecting relationships between the structures of family, gender, and higher education. Focusing on how their, their family's gender norms and expectations affect Chicano Latina women as they venture out to pursue higher education, my thesis thought, sought to investigate through in-depth interviews how families support, negotiate, or reject their daughter's higher education decisions. Furthermore, the interviews were coded with a specific and opposing theoretical framework in mind. Gloria y Anzuldua's Culturas que Traicionas, Cultures That Betray, and Patricia Hill Collins' Motherwork. Family and traditions can be daughter's limits, becoming, culture, culture, becoming cultures that betray, as women can be the ones that perpetuate their own oppression. On the other hand, Motherwork describes mothers of color fight against society in order to teach their children their cultural and survivor, survival. This paradigm was set up in order to explore the fluidity of the axis of gender as it intersects with race slash ethnicity. Through this research then, I found that as daughters began begin to form their identities as, Ch as Chicana Latina college students, their parents also begin to develop a relationship with the system of higher education. In both insta instances, the relationship was stressful and frustrating as students' identities and cultures challenged them. Parents found themselves amongst a system they were unable to understand and maneuver. As the daughters changed, so did the parents, but there was a reflex, reflexive quality to this change that neither culturas que traicionan nor mother works could capture the particular context and flavor of these mutual adjustments. This demonstrates the complex, diverse, and unique locations of Chicano, Chicano Latino families. So in this next paragraph, the applicant speaks about um, their research experience. And if you note here, they went really deep in discussing their um, research project. So not only do you learn about um, their methods, but they also speak thoroughly about the theoretical frameworks that they used to analyze their, um, their data. And so I think because this is a PhD program, this is very crucial, not only to um, you know, being accepted to the program, but also to showing the committee what the student um, potentially wants to research, but also what type of skills they have gained through their research experience. So if you are interested in a PhD program, which you probably are if you're watching this video, you need to go thorough into your explanation of your research projects and talk about the theoretical frameworks, the uh, methods you use, how you, um, you know, collected your data and all that stuff and start a conversation with the committee and show them what you learned within that study. Through my thesis, I discovered that parents' voices and experiences are often left out of the literature. 
minimizing their roles and leaving their children to depend on a distant or fragmented relationship with higher education. As a result, I have become interested in further exploring parents' roles within higher education and how this relationship in return can shape student experiences. Grounded on critical race and gender theory as theoretical framework, for my graduate work, I plan on researching how it is that parents of first-generation Chicano Latino college students understand the system of higher education. Through a qualitative interview-based approach or project, I seek to explore the relationship between these families and higher education. Specifically, I want to look at how it is that these parents develop the understanding and perceptions of the system, what are the resources, tools, knowledge, and power structures that help them develop these notions, and what are the limits and barriers they face. Similarly, I want to investigate how families' understanding and reactions to higher education influence the decisions and experiences of Chicano Latino students. To what degree do these students take into consideration their families' opinions of higher education, the reasoning behind it, and the results of these decisions are all notions that I seek to explore through my graduate work. This research becomes important due to the changing dy dynamics in American society. The Chicano Latino population is increasingly growing, shifting the dynamics of society. Thus, there needs to be a re-evaluation of the population's full incorporation into the educational system. So in this next paragraph, the applicant describes what they want their dissertation to potentially be. And so um, one tip that I have for PhD statement of purposes is to definitely include something similar. Show the committee what you plan to research, even though they understand that this research project could change and evolve as you work your way through the PhD program. But the, um, you want to show them like what you plan to research and how that aligns to um, a faculty member's research agenda. Harvard, Harvard Graduate School of Education is the ideal institution for me to develop and carry out my research ambitions. As I am interested in exploring and analyzing the educational system and its disparities at such a micro level, the work of Professor Nancy E. Hill closely aligns to mine. Interested in how students and families develop an, an, an understanding of higher education, I also seek to explore how family slash parent dynamics and socialization environments influence children's academic performance and achievements. Furthermore, Professor Hill's work on different parenting practices as they vary across ethnic and socioeconomic status offers a different and comparative angle to my own research as it offers a context on which to locate and compare Chicano Latino families. Similarly, the work of Professor Vivian Liu adds a different perspective to my own since she focuses on the experiences of immigrants. Being that a significant percentage of the Chicano Latino community is immigrant, her work on immigrant parent incorporation into the educational system is an important analytical addition to my own work. The intersection between classes, culture, and immigrant status has an important consequence in how parents relate and understand the educational system. It is through the guidance and assistance of these scholars and the rest of the Harvard Graduate School of Education faculty that I hope to be able to use my lived and research experiences with the educational system in order to develop groundbreaking and insightful work that can contribute to social change. Ultimately, the Cultures, Communities, and Education program will help me fulfill my aspiration to be a scholar activist, one that, that is not only an expert in the experiences of Chicano Latino families in education, but also one who continues to advocate, and, and advocate for and empower this community through scholarship and action. So in the last paragraph here, the applicant uh, answers the question, why Harvard? So they describe the faculty they wanna work with and how their research aligns with her, um, the applicant's research agenda and interests. And then she ends the paragraph by reiterating her goals and how Harvard's gonna help her reach those goals. All right, y'all, so that, that's the end of reading this PhD um, statement of purpose for the Harvard Graduate School of Education. If you have any questions, please leave comments down below and I will get to those as soon as I can. Um, let me know if you do like these videos, the ones that I read statement of purposes, because I already have a few out there. I have at least four. And if it's something that you guys are not interested in, then I will stop doing these and, and do some other videos. Um, please give me comments down below to let me know if you like them and um, give me a, a like and that will let me know that you do enjoy these videos and that you want me to continue to, to read um, Statement of Purposes for different universities. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, please give it a thumbs up and leave me some comments down below. 
Um, let me know what other content you want me to create, whether it's more of my graduate school experience or more admissions tips because we are in the admissions um, season. So you should be like writing those statement of purposes, asking for letters of recommendations, writing that resume because applications are going to be due um, either next month or in January. So definitely let me know how I can help you write a competitive application for a PhD or master's programs um, and I would take your advice and recommendations for ideas um, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel i do want i have this goal of getting to at least 100 subscribers by the end of this year so i have about two months to do so and if you do subscribe to my channel that's going to really help me out all right so i will see you in the next video